if I asked you to bet like $50 or $100 a cue, how many verbal cues would your dog get correct 99% of the time? I'm just gonna test this out with my puppy. Okay, here we go. Thank you. Hop it up. There's one. Break. There's two. So I've got two. Now, let's try this one. This, this next one, uh, she should sit. Get it. Okay, so there's three, there's four. Out. Down. Get it. There's five. And Lee. She got that one wrong. Lee, Lee, Lee. Yeah, she got that one right. I'm gonna put that on the ground. Um, thank you. Back. Get it. So what I got, I'm at seven that she got right the first time I asked without my help. Okay, let me try a difficult one. Thank you. Frizza. Nice. Good job. Good job. Okay. Twizzle. Nice. Get it. Thank you. Hop it up. Good. All right. So there's a ton that I just showed you maybe 10 or 12, and I, and I don't want to feel like I'm showing off, but puppy is young, and she got a lot of one time. The only thing she missed was actually one that I would have swore she would have got. If I had asked her for a right turn, I would have thought she would have maybe missed that, but got the left. But she, when I asked her to turn to the, to the left, she, it took, uh, uh, it was only on her second time that she got it correct. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. This is a 14 month old puppy. If I was to bring Swagger out, I could go fast and furious and just rip off cues and he would get them correct after correct after correct, right? Yes, it's, <laughs> it's showing off, but today I want to share with you how you can get that too. All right, that's what I want to do. As I, uh, let's have some hearts for everybody understanding that little bit of what I just showed you, how everybody can have it, okay? So some of you are saying, oh, wait a minute, I don't have any. If you stood still and just say the, said the words, how many could your dog get right 99% of the time? And let me explain how you get that kind of consistency and understanding. I want that for you because, as many of you know, I have a master class upcoming. It starts on the 18th. Every time I do a live, I say a different date because I'm not entirely sure what the date is. It starts next Monday. So somebody tell me what that date is. And while we're talking, we'll have some hearts for the three sponsors for our masterclass. Apparently we're being invaded and this is helping us, you know, saving our lives. Um, for my Merles, Galligan. Galligan is, don't, what is, what is your deal? Do you see dead people? Oh, it's golfers. She's seeing the golfers. <laughs> Galligan is donating some targets. We're giving out some of those. We gave some of those yesterday. They're donating, hold on. Do you wanna go see what's going on over there? You can break if you want. Go break. Yeah. Galligan is also giving out a back bump, or several back bumps. And the good people at Blue Nine, they're giving out um, propels. I would say this is my new favorite fitness tool. Okay, so why, when I asked this, I don't know, I saw 20 or 30 of you, 30 of you write that you don't have verbal cues, that you would be willing to bet me $100 per cue that your dog would nail 99% of the time. There were very few of you, and I'm going to share with you my hallucination, why that is, and then I'm going to share with you how we're going to fix it for you. Okay? Okay. So, if you think of dog training, you go to your very first ever dog training for most people. And I'm happy to say, I mean, that, that you know, this is changing. And it's not like this is horrible, but there isn't a bridge. Okay. So, you go to your first dog training class and you've got, they tell you to bring all good sorts of good treats and then they tell you, okay, we're gonna teach the dog to sit, put the cookie over the dog's nose till they sit and then say good sit and feed them. So several things happening here. The value is in your hand because your hand holds the magic food. So not only is the value with the food, so what is the, what is the dog thinking about at that moment? 
picture, I love the example of our, our Labrador retrievers, bless their heart. Oh my gosh. I mean, not like they're the only one, but they, I believe, would sell you for a good piece of food. They'd probably even sell you for an average piece of food, right? You picture your, your typical Labrador retriever in, in uh, grade one or puppy class, and you've got food in your hand, good food, and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And you're saying, sit, 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 good sit. Okay, what are they hearing? Nothing. They're hearing nothing. That wah, 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 wah. Okay, so you're trying to add a cue when the dog really doesn't know what they're doing and the value is all in your hand. So they're learning, oh, follow the hand, follow the hand, follow the hand. Okay, now you're gonna get that lure to sit, to down, to come beside you, to come when called. It's the same, where's the, where's the value? When you're doing sit, down, come when called, value is still in the hand. All right, can you guys read that? Let me know if you can, give me a heart if you can read that. Now, we're moving on, we've progressed. You've graduated these classes. Now, take your dog and say that all the behaviors you learned, come, down, sit, stand. How many of those would you be willing to bet your dog could do on one cue without you physically helping? I'd be willing to bet if you're like the students that I've seen come into our program from other programs, that would be the square root of zero, right? That because the value's still with the food and the words weren't wah, 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 when you stand still and say, and you don't give pretend lures, they can't do it. Now they say, you're ready to go to agility class. Now you go to agility class and they take these little margarine lids and they put food on the margarine lids. Now, where is the value now? It's on the margarine lids, right? It's on the target. So if you let your dog loose in agility class, do they run up the dog walk? If they've been doing it long enough, maybe, but most of the dogs are just gonna, I see a margarine lid, they're gonna run to the margarine lids. There's, oh my God, cause there's a lot of food on those margarine lids, right? So the food now, we're teaching our dogs, our hand is very important. And margarine lids are very important. And then we might put your dog through some uh, weave cha a channel with, with wires so they can't come out and there's a toy at the end. Where's the value? That's the question. If you're going, oh God, this is driving me nuts with this hair. Any of you who cut hair for a living, I apologize. You're probably frustrated watching me. So if you are going to a class, all I want you to do is remember this question. Where's the value right now? And when a teacher asks you to do that, just ask them that. Okay, if I do that, where's the value for my dog? And how does that benefit me? Like if I wanted to run agility and the value is in my hand, how, how, would that, how would that be a value? Oh, the dog isn't going to leave, but they're going to want to look at me to do agility. Or they're going to want to search the end of contacts. Guess what? I will tell you. It is possible to train agility dogs this way. And it might even be possible to train some great agility dogs. Maybe not in this day and age, but 10 years ago, 20 years ago, a lot of great agility dogs were trained this way. However, it takes so much time. How many of you watching this right now find yourself going to bed at night going, wow, I had hours and hours of extra time on my hands today. I don't know how I'm going to fill my day tomorrow because I just have all this free time and nothing to do with it. Yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it, right? So what we want is training methodology that makes sense to the dog, that makes it efficient for you to train. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Okay, so why does this work? It does work. It works because dogs are freaking brilliant. And what this relies on is something called pattern training. Pattern training, right? It, so the dog learns, if I do this enough, and I will, the, the, at first when you're doing the luring with the dog who loves food, they're not hearing sit, they're not hearing good sit, they're not, they're just, there's food, 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 food. Eventually, they'll get their, they'll, they'll, they'll figure out that when you do that, if they sit, then your food gets released. It works because it's patterned. Think about this. You're driving somewhere in your car and your GPS is on 
and it's taking you somewhere without thinking. You now are that overexcited Labrador retriever. Boop, 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 boop. Your GPS is the big cookie. You're just following it mindlessly, not giving any thought to anything that's going on. You may go, if you're like me, I went to this business meeting in Toronto every three months for 10 years using my my GPS. I, and, and the one time the GPS broke at 10 o'clock at night when I was coming home and I was, I was, I didn't know how to get out of the city, right? Now, if instead of using the GPS, the first day, um, somebody drove me and took me in front, like just two doors from the street, from the, from the building and said, okay, drive to the big red building and stop. That's, you're gonna, gonna, that's where you're gonna go and meet today. That's the meeting place. Okay, drive to store, big, big red meeting. Okay, and there's the parking lot on the side. Okay, big red building. Okay, now, now they back me up and they do it four or five times. And every time they give me, I, we get there, they give me what? Yeah, that's vegan chocolate chip cookies. Okay, I got it, I got it. Now they take me back another block. They say, do you see where the white picket fence is? Right at the fire station? Turn right there. And then you know what to do. Oh yeah, I drive to that big red building and get in the parking lot and then get my chocolate chip cookies. And then they keep backing me. How long would it be for me if my GPS broke? I wouldn't even be turning the GPS on anymore because literally from my house to that meeting, it was probably like five or six turns in total, in total. But I could never get it because of the lure, right? If I'd done it often enough, or if I was different, my, my late husband, he could take, go somewhere and learn how to be, like he could, after two or three visits, he'd know how to get there like 10 years later. I don't have that skill, right? So some people are great at it. Some dogs figure this stuff out really quickly. But why so many dogs struggle is the highest value. The highest value is always the food, right? So the value doesn't, for these dogs, it isn't the agility obstacle. It isn't, it never gets transferred to you, all right? I'm gonna give you a little example. My dog's sleeping, but she loves her frizzer, okay? Now, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna set this up so you guys can see this. Boom, boom. I'm gonna have to back this up a little bit. Okay, so I want you to be able to see the traffic cone and the jump. And then I'll put her freezer fixed. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, you guys are going to have to be able, I'm going to have to come closer so you guys can see where she's looking. Here, ready? Freezer. Yeah, this thing. Okay. So you're going to have to trust. I want you to be able to see where she's looking. Okay, ready? Get the thing. Oh, 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 oh. There's a freezer. Bum, but um, I could take her other twice. She's not tugging on her frizzer that much. Do you want the ting? Get a frizzer. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. I'm going to put the frisbee or the frizzer. I'm putting it over there. Okay. Come here. This. It's right there. She can see it. Look at her. That's where my value is. Can you get over here? And sit. But when I come over here, does she look at there? Does she look to her left? No, oh, she'll look here. Break. Come here. I guess I gotta say the name of the obstacle. Come here. And sit. Good. It's still there. She still would love to have it. Jump. <laughs> You're making a demo not work, little. Come here.
So as much as she loves her frizzer, give it to me. Uh, 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 uh. She's still thinking about those golfers. As much as she loves the frizzer, thank you, Joanne, how about? The value has been transferred from the frizzer into the jump and into the PNU or into anything. I could take my bait bag off that's got cookies in it and do the exact same thing. Open up the cookies, put the cookies on the floor and get the exact same thing. Because the value, the highest value is shared. And I want to share with you how you can get that. Anybody interested in that? How do we get a dog that it doesn't matter what it is you look at or you point to, they go, yeah, okay. Well, you know what, let's just do it with food again because she was a little bit flat with her frizzer. Okay, we'll do this again. I'm gonna have to get a target. job okay hop it up so it doesn't matter what I'm using yeah taters like I want in on that game it doesn't matter what I'm using for value the transfer has happened and I need you to understand this with great clarity so here's what I'm gonna do I want you to write this question down when you go to class and if your instructor says we're just going to put this out here and your dog's gonna run to it I want you to ask them Where's the value for my dog then? And how do we get it away from that? And if they say we just do this a hundred times, you say, I don't have a hundred times. Okay? So let me just share with you now. Okay, hearts for now, transferring that value. Let's transfer the value. Okay. So in a previous live, I shared there's 10 layers of things that we have to teach our dogs in agility. So many things, so many things. And in order to be able to get all that in, you have to be efficient with your dog training. In order to be efficient with your dog training, the value can't stay with the cookie, the value can't be in your hand, the value has got to get transferred. So let's get it transferred right now. So this is what it looks like. Those of you who are gonna be joining me in our Breakthrough Agility Masterclass, this is critical, right? I need you to understand this because it will make training for you so easy. Those of you who are interested in Breakthrough Agility Masterclass, go to handling360.com and you can join there, right? And I mentioned we have a challenge going on. Um, I'm gonna be posting the, this week's challenge probably tonight or tomorrow, okay? It's a good one and you don't have to have any agility equipment to be able to do it. Five steps to make this so much better. And I'm gonna take the example of this. You could use the example of anything, anything that you want to teach your dog. It starts with establishing value. So does your dog love cookies? If your dog doesn't love cookies, let's build up the value for cookies. How do you build up the value? You could do things like throw it, hold the dog back, throw the cookie, race them for it, get them excited. If you already have a dog who's excited about toys or cookies, you now have to create self-control. That's where our game It's Your Choice comes in. If you aren't familiar with It's Your Choice, go to handling360.com and I will give you right there, it, 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 It's Your Choice is part of all of our online programs, but, we're, but you can get it when you become part of the masterclass, all right? 
We've got to be able to put cookies on the floor and train my dog in agility. Cookies are there to be ignored. They're only something that you need to be concerned with when I say, let's go get the cookie. Let's go get the frizzer, right? Ideally, your dog's a little more awake than my puppy was. She's more concerned about the golfers. How dare they use their golf carts on the uh, golf carts on the golf course? Okay, so we have established value. Step number one, how many people show of hearts if, you, if your dog has something that you, that, that you know they love? Uh, it, ideally, food and toys, but as long as you've got one, we can transfer the value to the other. Okay, so yeah, we got a few hearts out there. So we've established the value. My dog loves X, and you wanna grow that. My dog loves all kinds of things, right? That's what we want. Now, we want to show your dog you have an opportunity to earn the value. Earn the value, okay? And what we've done, we'll do here is we'll manipulate the environment. We'll share the, okay, we'll do a little bit of what we call the search game, throwing out the cookie, telling our dog search. They can go and grab it. And now there's an opportunity to earn the value. I like to sit on the floor in the bathroom. It's a nice small area. Let's say I want to teach my dog the word frizzer means pick this up. All right, so I'll sit on the floor and I'll put that there in the bathroom. There's nothing else around. It, you know, you, you could do this with anything. Once the dog understands about the transfer of value, it works for anything. If you go to my YouTube video, Perch Work Pivots and Spins, I share about how to teach value for a foot target there. Okay, so now we need to teach the dog, you have an opportunity to earn something. And then once they go, all I do is like, step on this and then I get a cookie and then I will go, okay, well now you have to like do something like flip it with your nose or eventually I want you to pick it up and then eventually I want you to pick it up and hold it and then pick it up and hold it and bring it to me. Maybe tug with it a little bit. And that's how you earn the value. So we have established the value. Now we're connecting the value to a behavior, all right? It's not attached to my, my body, it's connected to a behavior. Now we're gonna give many, many reinforcements for that behavior, picking up the frizzer, or going over a jump, or hitting a foot target, all right? Many reinforcements, and now what we're doing by doing that is transferring value to a thing. In an agility, a thing could be a start line, a position, like at my side, I need to transfer the value to be right in reinforcement zone. I need to transfer value to want to go in a tunnel, to be equally happy to go in a tunnel or go over a jump or go on a seesaw or turn with my body. We transfer it to a thing, a thing. Okay, so now my thing today that I'm gonna use is the Frisbee. So now I've got the dog going, yeah, I love it, I love it. Wherever you put it, I'm gonna pick it up. I might go and do it in different rooms. So I generalize that behavior. Now, when the dog says, okay, okay, I need stillness. And the stillness is allowed the dog to think because we're gonna introduce a cue, a word, a verbal cue. That means when I say this word, grab this and pick it up. Or when I say this word, go over a jump. Or when I say this word, take that tunnel. Or when I say this word, come into reinforcement zone, turn tight or jump long, right? We're creating verbal cues and attaching them to behaviors. What most people do is they, 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 they say the word as the dog's doing the behavior, over, right? And the dog doesn't have a clue. They don't have a clue. So now we've got stillness and now we're gonna say the word and we're gonna wait. This is where patience comes in. You have to be patient, just wait. And then even if the dog like moves towards it, you're going to reward that. And very quickly, they're gonna go, oh, I remember this is when I picked this thing up. And now the cue means pick it up. So now we've taken the value that got transferred to a thing and we're transferring the value to a cue. And it could be a verbal cue to start. It could be a physical cue. If you check out, I think it was episode number 114 in my podcast, I talk about the, the importance of, of, of understanding, the, um, listening to the feedback from your dog when, when you're training. And if they aren't, when you say over, if they're sitting there going, what? You saying it louder or getting closer or getting bigger isn't helping. Your dog's giving you feedback. You didn't train verbal cues the way Susan Garrett talked about it on that Facebook Live. 
did you? Okay, how about you go back and do that, right? So let me just show you what this looks like. I'll do it with this. Now, this will be a challenge because she already has a cue, so she might not pick it up. I'm gonna, I'll see what, I'll see what we get. So I'm gonna lower you guys. Let me just see, get this out of the way. Mm -mm -mm. I'm so excited that you guys are gonna get this. This is, this is life-changing. It's life-changing for your dog. It's life-changing for you. Okay, so I'm gonna lower this and Remember, you're gonna to go to bed at night and you're gonna say, holy smokes, I now have all this extra free time because I don't have to do 500 repetitions of the same thing. Okay, this break. All right, so I'm gonna get out of the way. So establishing value, <laughs> search. Good. Now, I'm, she, I, she, I mean, we already know that she loves her cookies, so that's not a big deal. But now, what I want to do is I need to Establish the opportunity to learn. And let me just share with you, this environment is the worst ever that you could train this, um, establishing the opportunity to learn. Why? My dog isn't on a leash. She's got 13,000 square feet to roam. There's a million other things she could do. This is the worst way to do this. The best case can, would be maybe putting up a little X pen or at the very least putting your dog on a leash. All right, so let's see how it goes, okay? I'm just throwing this out here, so I'm going to get her excited again. Good. And give her a cookie. That's it. You can use a clicker for this, no problem. Good. Give a cookie. So I'm teaching her reinforcement get, comes. It, this is the opportunity to get, to get value. Just pick this up for me. Now, at first, you might be just, you know, rewarding her for, I'm trying to put it in a place where you can see. Okay, here we go. Good. So I'm going to pretend that she doesn't know this at all. Good. Right? So if this was a dog who didn't know it, I would reward anything that they do once. So I would reward touching it. I would reward good. Sniffing it and pretending she doesn't know anything. Now I'm going to withhold until she does something else. Good. Search. How do you mess up your dog? Good job. Yes. You're not gonna be able to pick it up if you're standing on it. That's gonna be problematic. Good. Good, search. Good. Good. So now I'm gonna just grow that behavior. Good. So that, I'm not gonna say good just for bringing it to me. I want to I'm gonna say good for you holding it for a second. So she didn't get a cookie for that one. Good, nice. See how helping you hurt her? I wanted to help you by showing you you can reward little things to get there. She already understood what the behavior was, so I kind of messed her up. So I'll just pick this up again. Good. Good. By putting it in the air, she can't put her feet on it. Good. Good. Nice. <laughs> Good. Good. 
So now she's bringing it right to me. So now I think I've got a good she, a dog that if I toss that out there, she's going to grab it and hold it. Good. Until I say good. So I've got the dog picking up what I want, showing me there's value it, for it. I've got her bringing it back. I've got her holding it until I, I get it. I want it released. So now I'm going to give her a cue. So we have to put in that stillness. So here's what I'm going to do with her. I'm going to ask her to sit. And because she already knows the cue, I'm going to, I'm going to um, create a new one. I'm going to mess my dog up again. So how about we use the cue? I see some hearts. So how about every time I use say the cue heart, you guys show me a heart. Okay, ready? Heart. Good. Thank you. Can you sit? So if she goes before, I'm just going to pick it up. Heart. Good. Heart. So she didn't pick it up right away. The cue sometimes confuses them, especially when that's not her cue. I've already proofed this that she shouldn't pick anything up unless it's the right cue. But I'm doing this for you guys, screwing up my dog for you. So I'm gonna ask her to, come here little, sit. I'm gonna ask her to sit. You guys can't see her, but see, I don't have my hands on her. Heart. Nice, good. So good, so good. Sit. Nice. I see some of you still sit giving me a heart when I'm asking for heart. Sit. So I didn't, I didn't ask for it. So she has to wait till I ask for it. That's how we pair. We've got value for this. Now I need value for the word. Heart. Nice. Thank you. There we go. Ready? Sit. <laughs> Cheater, 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 cheater. Sit. I did make it very difficult, so you're not going to throw it. Come here, little. Sit. Heart. Nice. Good. Good. Heart. Nice. So good. Okay, now I'm going to give her her real word. Sit. Frizza. <laughs> you guys made me break my dog. Frizzer. So good. Are you confused? We'll fix it. That's the nice thing about training this way. It just means extra cookies and you can fix it. So easy, right? So we had, let me just go back to the board because I want you guys to get these five steps so important for anything that we're doing any part of dog training, but in particular, you're joining my master class. We've got a lot of dog training to do in the master class. So I need you to get this bit right. Okay, five steps. Establish the value, that's food or toys. We could have, I could have done all that up with, with toys. Yeah, I did screw up my puppy a little bit, but here's the cool thing is I can fix it. It's just cookies, more cookies for her. She's like, I'm in. Establish the value. Establish uh, really good rewards that your dog loves, then establish the opportunity. What is the criteria that's easy? You're gonna make it easy for your dog by manipulating the environment, by making it a small area like your bathroom or, or putting your dog on a leash or putting your dog in an X-Pen. Establishing the opportunity to earn. This is the behavior. That is the opportunity for you to earn rewards. That's your opportunity, all right? So once we've got the dog that says, hmm, something about this. Yeah, she loves that. Now we're gonna do many repetitions and now we've started the transfer of reinforcement to a thing, to a thing. We got the transfer of reinforcement to a thing happens. And if, if you've been following my podcast, you understand D-A-S-H, we've got a habitat as the last thing. We've got to change that to all different habitats. So the dog says, I know what this is. I see that on the floor, I pick it up, it's great. Now you notice, I'm, you, I might put that on a table. If the dog is doing things with their feet, I don't want, the environment has to be so constricted that the, that the dog, the, uh, the correct answer is so obvious to her. So do you see how I picked it up so she couldn't use her feet? Correct is obvious. Many reinforcements, I'm getting a transfer of value to the thing 
What I establish of value here is all going in there. It's not about my hands. It's not about a margarine lids. It's about things that will grow us good behaviors for agility. And now we want stillness before we add a cue. So you just ask your dog to sit, put the thing down, say watermelon, heart. I said heart, you guys gotta give them, come on. And then your dog might go, huh? And if they do, just pick up the thing and drop it again. And then they go, oh, oh, oh okay. And if eventually they're gonna be jumping on the word that is now showing you we've got the transfer of value to a Q, okay? So that is it, five steps to Nirvana training for you, five steps that will set you free so that your dog will have so much more clarity in the training that you're doing. And then what I would like you to do is bring that training and come to my Breakthrough Agility Masterclass. We are going to have so many breakthroughs for you, just like this one, because when you get the dog training dialed in for agility, it makes agility so much easier for you and your dog. So go to handling360.com, sign up for the Breakthrough Agility. It's 100% free. And while you're there, you're going to see an opportunity to join our VIP. And what the VIP group is, it's an opportunity to work in a very personal environment with me. A small Zoom community where I see your face, you see my face, we can talk, we can have conversations, and if you feel up to it, you'll get your dog, you'll train in front of me. It's a very small VIP group, okay? I hope that you take this to heart because I swear it'll make all the difference in your dog training. All right, please share this little video with as many dog owners as you know, because I want every dog to live with the kind of clarity my dogs have when we're training. It just makes it so much easier for the dog. And guess what? You're going to bed at night going, darn that Susan Garrett, she made training so easy for me. I got all this extra time on my hands. I don't know what to do. See you in the masterclass, okay? <laughs>